In the last lecture, we've seen what router exploit is, how to install and start it. Now it's time to show you a real exploit on a router and I'll choose the default gateway of the LAN. The first step is to find the IP address of the default gateway, which is usually the first or the last IP of the subnet. However, we could scan the network using nmap or netdiscover. In this example, this is the default gateway. 192.168.0.1 And I'm starting router exploit. In the router exploit directory, OK, in this one, I'm executing Python 3 rsf.py. Let's start a module called AutoPawn used to scan for vulnerabilities. The style of working is the following. To select a module, type use and then whatever module you want to use. Show options to display the parameters of the module you've selected. Set to set any of the parameters you see in the output of show options and finally run to execute the module. Use tab key multiple times for completion. So I'm selecting the auto pound module. Use scanners auto pound. Use the tab key for auto completion. Now to see the options of the module, I execute show options. These are all available options. We notice the target option, which is the most important. Let's set the target as being the default gateway. Set target and the IP address of the default gateway. The next step is to type run and it will run all the known exploits against the target to see if it's vulnerable to any of them. It's checking for vulnerabilities. We are waiting for it to finish scanning. It takes some time, a minute or two, so I'm gonna pause the recording. And it's over. If there is no known vulnerability discovered, that's good news. Get to the next device and eventually repeat the scan after a while. Keep in mind that there could be other devices on your LAN that are not router and are vulnerable. My advice is to scan all IoT devices using router exploit. You first discover all possible targets like IP cameras using nmap and then you run router exploit against the targets. In our case, the router is vulnerable to this exploit. Router exploit displays the vulnerabilities and I'm gonna select the exploit. If you want to see all available exploits, you type use exploits and then two times the tab key. And these are the categories. These are all routers exploits and all exploits for TP-Link and so on. I'm selecting the exploit in order to execute it. To see all options of the exploit, you execute show options. The next step is to set the target. Set target and its IP address. And I'm running it. Perfect. Now let's see the payloads of the exploit. A payload is a customized piece of code that the attacker will execute on the vulnerable system in order to compromise it. So show payloads. A reverse shell is such a payload in which the attacker gains interactive shell access. 
the target machine initializes a connection to the hacker's machine and the hacker's machine listens for the incoming connections on a specific port. We notice there are two payloads available. Let's select the reverse shell payload. It will send us a reverse shell. Set payload and the payload. The next step is to set the IP address of the local machine, the one that will receive the shell of the victim. This is our own IP address. This is the IP address. Set L host and the IP address. The next step is to effectively run the exploit or fire the payload against the victim. To run the exploit with the selected payload, you type and execute run. I won't do it because I don't really want to break the router or anything else with this example. The conclusion of this lecture is that if you have a router or an Internet of Things device, it is your responsibility to make sure that it runs the latest version of firmware and that the default credentials have been changed. You can discover known vulnerabilities running router exploit against the device and then mitigate the possible attacks. Also take a look at Repost, which is a router exploit fork. It adds some nice features like wrapping your own applications inside a tailored interactive shell.